greetings beautiful souls and welcome to my channel if you are new here my name is goddess ebony q and this is a space where we hold heart-led discussions on women's wellness wisdom and spirituality so if this is a topic that you seem interested in make sure you click that subscribe button on today's segment this is books and butterflies Books and Butterflies is a cozy reading nook where we discuss spiritual books for soul liberation. And at this particular time, we are reading through The Wild Woman's Way by Michaela Boehm. You don't have to have a book to participate. You could just listen in as we read through. If you'd like to get a book, make sure you click the link below to grab the Audible or a book from Amazon. And then you can follow along with us as we continue to read through. But if not, that's okay. Thank you for being here. And we'll go ahead and get started. So the first chapter is The Wild Woman. So who is the wild woman, you ask? Being the wild woman sounds alluring and impossible. Dangerous and maybe a little bit crazy. Often when I teach a wild woman's way intensive, curious participants from the workshops come by our dining tables or even peek at us in the workshop hall. Oh, so you are the wild woman, they say. The women often with a glint in their eyes. And the men sometimes a bit hesitancy. They might admit with a grin that they expected to see crazed, wild-haired creatures foaming at their fanged mouths and clawing the walls. Amidst the laughter of these curious people, you can often see yearning, intrigue, or repulsion in their eyes. The wild woman is a part of each of us. She is not the crazed and uncivilized creature. She is sometimes made out to be. But the part of us that is deeply and inextricably connected to natural life. She is the ancient part of us that knows of the rising of the moon and the movement of the tides and connected aspects in each of us that has survived and thrived in the wilderness for many thousands of years. Sounds like a woman who knows who she is. She embodies knowledge of curing and healing, ritual and prayer, of the tracker, hunter, gatherer, and shaman. She is connected to all things in nature, including her own body, whom she cares for and utilizes as an instrument of perception. She represents a part of each woman that comes from nature and is part of nature. The wild woman is an archetype and as such can rise from the unconscious and come into play when the time is right. She is a portal to natural empowerment through which we understand that we don't have to become someone else to be loved, that who we are is utterly perfect, and that each of us is born with a natural genius that can be revealed and will bloom with the help of our body's native intelligence. So then Michaela goes on to talk about archetypes. Each archetype holds a specific power, collective power, and the knowledge that resides in all of us. And working with an archetype can awaken the attributes and wisdom innate in each individual. And as spiritual beings living out this physical experience, one of the ways that we connect is through relating. So working with archetypes is something that comes really natural to us. And when I think about archetypes, they represent something symbolic and they show us a symbolic way of moving through life. So when we think about Jesus, Jesus, this archetype embodied and reminds us of unconditional love, extreme devotion, amongst many other things. The idea that we can be saved um, for our sins or for our wrongdoings. When you think about Buddha, it reminds us of peace, stillness, meditation. When we think about Mother Mary, she represents chastity, remembrance of miracles. This is already such a prominent practice in our society. And so she is mentioning here the beauty and working with archetypes. And she says, and I'm on page 25, and I'm not reading verbatim. I'm just kind of moving around and um, summarizing certain things. So she says, the archetype can take on many forms. You might feel 
the wild woman expressed as a mother, a wise woman, a wrathful woman, a warrior woman, a healer, and a destroyer as needed. The power and knowledge of these collective energies become available through the genius of the body. And the body, we each carry instinctive information that is far deeper than what we can conceive in our minds. By engaging with the stories and images of archetypes, we invoke the lived experience of all women before us and connect ourselves to the deeper collective knowledge. Women's bodies learn through resonance. So I think this is also important to touch on. So by connecting with the positive attributes of an archetype, we invoke these parts of us naturally. So at this point, Michaela invites us to engage in an exercise to connect with our wild women archetypes. She asks us to consider the female archetypes or characters that we're drawn to, either in myths, books, or movies, and let ourselves imagine and feel their most powerful attributes and notice what happens in our body and mood. When you imagine a favorable character, do you feel your chest rise, your back straighten? Do you feel more regal? Do you feel more powerful? Does your voice get stronger? All of these different changes that we feel within our body are the examples of embodying that archetype. And in this work, especially when you are shedding the layers of who society has told you to be and how you have functioned to survive up until this point, it takes a lot of peeling off the things that no longer serve you so that you can remember who you are. And some, and sometimes, and sometimes when we peel back those layers, the wounds hurt. And so it requires a level of healing. And in that healing, we have to feel to heal. So embodiment practices are a very powerful way of transforming that pain into something beautiful. Michaela says from here, it is important not only to cognitively entertain ourselves, but also to let the body access, understand, and express who we are. Here on page 28, Michaela says, my first formal engagement with archetypal work came from my main teacher, Deepa, the woman who trained me in the lineages of Kashmiri Shaivism I now hold. She instructed me via the archetypes of that lineage. My first practical engagement with the archetype of the wild woman came in the form of Kali, ooh, Kali, the Hindu goddess of destruction and rebirth. Kali Ma, Kali Ma is so fierce and fiery. To me, she is the dark feminine. If you've ever seen a picture of goddess Kali, and I'm going to put one up on the screen here. She's holding a head. She has a sword in her hand. She's ready to destroy and tear down every structure or order that goes against the nature of truth, right? That goes against the nature of truth. So her wildness does not come from anger or crazed frenzy. It comes from an immediate response to circumstances and is born from deep love. She destroys whatever is less than love so more love can be born. Her instincts and responses are immediate because they spring from her deep connection to her nature and her state of being fully present to each moment. Many people are afraid of this Kali because she has a fire in her eye and she's a warrior. And many of us are afraid of that part of ourselves due to how society feels like we're supposed to show up as women. That's not ladylike to do that or say that. But when you're coming from a place of love and a, a deep innate knowing if some structures got to be torn down, if some belief systems have to be snatched and shaken apart, if the way things are moving and the way relationship dynamics are functioning and they are not serving you, you have 
all the right to tear that down and to start over. And so this is interesting because one of the first archetypes that came to me during my awakening was Oya, Oya Yansa of the Yoruba cosmology. And Oya carries a bit of this energy too. She is the goddess of the storm. She is the tornado. She's the wind. And Oya stands for truth. Oya comes and tears down anything that is less than love as well. Anything that's not resonating in truth and the truth of who you are. Oya comes to clear the path. If you got some blockages and obstructions within yourself, within your lineage, within your, your ancestry, within your present day life, reflecting your internal life, or Ya Yansa comes and she really breaks through that path of clearing those things. And this is what we consider the destructive feminine. But the destructive feminine isn't talked about as much. But the destructive fem feminine is just as needed. Because when the masculine puts up these orders that are less than divine, all these structures in place that do not serve the feminine, do not serve the natural flow of things, it has to be torn down. Sometimes you just got to start from scratch. You got to start from the bottom. And the bottom is the core. Sometimes we see the bottom as a bad place to be. But the bottom sometimes is where we need to be. We need to be grounded. We need to be rooted. We need to find our roots. We need to find our stability. And sometimes we can't do that when we've been building on shaky terrain with shaky materials. And even if it is nicely structured and put up, if it does not serve you, tear it down and start over. Whew, I don't know where that one came from, but I do know where that one came from, okay? So to wrap this up, you see, look, I don't embody some archetypes. My voice has even gotten louder. <laughs> but the most important teaching I received, and this is page 29, through my teachers and my life experience is courageous engagement with life itself. Finding the divine and creating meaning in even the most simple and mundane activities. Sometimes we think we have to go outside of ourselves to do this thing, to engage with the magic. But the magic is us. The magic is you as a divine being. So I get to see the magic and the beauty and the sparkle in every aspect of my life. I get to see the symbolism in every part of my life. So when I'm cooking, sometimes I'm in the kitchen and I'm playing gospel and I'm playing these old school songs because they connect me with my ancestors. They connect me with my grandmother, who is a beautiful archetype to me because she was one of the best cooks in our family. And if I'm making macaroni and cheese, I'm cooking the food and I'm just listening to gospel and I'm and I'm feeling, I'm feeling my grandmother's essence. And then sometimes I'm in the kitchen and I'm dancing and I'm listening to Oshun. I'm listening to Oshun and I'm, I'm dancing and I'm feeling beauty and love and healing and I'm infusing that into my food. And that's why I don't knock anyone's spirituality because spirituality is just that. It's a, it's a personal relationship that we have with the divine within us. If you're deeply connected to angel numbers, and that is what guides you, that is finding the magic in the mundane. If you wear a certain color to, the, to embody the essence of the energy center or portal that you are working towards transforming and healing and bringing your awareness to, that is bringing magic to the divine. That is a direct expression of our spiritual, our spiritual essence and our spirituality as well. 
And Michaela goes on to say, I strongly believe that by engaging regularly in very simple, easy to achieve practices, we can, re we can reconnect to our innate feminine wisdom without adding yet another to do to our already full lives. As my teacher used to tell me, the best practice is the one that you actually do. So I'm going to go back to page 27. And this will be the homework. So for a moment, consider female characters that you are drawn to, either in myths, books, or movies. Let yourself imagine and feel their most powerful attributes and notice what happens in your body and mood. The attributes that light you up the most will support you to awaken your unique expression of the wild woman. As you go throughout your day, look for examples of those attributes in yourself and in other women. And see, this doesn't take anything from you. Once you take the time to imagine these different expressions of the wild women, just go throughout your everyday life. And if a woman in the gas station reminds you of one of your characters, just bring your awareness to what attributes about her remind you of this archetype that you would like to activate within you. Because at the end of the day, everything that we want to be, we already are. We just have to activate those parts of us. So when we are connecting with these divine deities, Orisha, or just characters and archetypes, we are just activating those parts of our DNA by bringing more awareness to them. So we'll just, so we'll close here and I will meet you back for chapter two. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, share it, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. And I'll see you next time, my beautiful butterflies.